I wanted to speak a little bit about death, if you don't mind. Not in a light way, of course. <laughs> okay. um, I think in your Awakening from the Meaning Crisis series, you said that very likely experience ends at like brain death, let's say. I think that's, yeah. I hope I'm not mistaken here. That, no, uh, that's fine. Like complete brain death. I mean, yeah. there's a lot of evidence that, well, because we are so inaccurate and even perhaps inept at saying what the neural correlate of consciousness is, we have made mistakes in saying, well, this area isn't working, so the person's unconscious. And we found out that we were wrong. So yeah. I would have to say something like comprehensive, complete brain death. Only at that stage do I think it's safe to say that consciousness has ceased to exist. Yes. So I'll get a little personal here. I had a psychedelic experience and, you know, you can't really trust these propositionally as I think you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you showed pretty clearly. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, here I was, to, to me, it was really transformational. I won't denigrate it anyway, but I came out of it with a very particular propositional claim and it was the following. I felt like I remembered where I came from and I felt a certainty that I'd never felt before in my life that I would come back there. And I know you know the literature that for a lot of people, their fear of death completely ceases. For me, that, that happened as well. And I wonder if there might be, maybe not in the way that, that you might describe where the brain dies and the experience or the consciousness is gone. I, I wonder if that, I don't know that that's that consciousness or that experience might somehow i don't know how <laughs> and i know it's it's maybe not the most productive thing to speculate about this but it's just an indulgence of mine might that merge or something because i know for example bernardo castro speaks about this being like yeah. you know i don't think it ends there because you know people have ndes and they have you know very spectacular um, experiences and so yeah i'll give you a opportunity to respond the problem with the NDE research is all of the attempts to have any evidence that people are actually floating free from their body, like, you know, in operating tables, you have things that contain pictures that can't be seen from above, and they can only be seen from above. Did you float above the table? Yeah. What was in the boxes? Oh, I don't know. Right. With all the attempts to find any evidence of accurate uh, uh, perception that would indicate that you actually were physically separate or moving have failed to find any evidence. Now that's absence of evidence is not the same thing as evidence of absence. I get that. Of course. Uh, but it does weaken the claim to say, well, the NDAs are just non-controversial evidence uh, for some sort of post-mortem existence. Um, uh, I know Bernardo has much, uh, I have a lot of respect for him, a lot. He has, he has as independent arguments for sort of analytic idealism that, and I, I know he's not basing everything on an NDE. So I'm just, I'm just addressing that. Yeah. I, I would put another proposal to you that I'd, I'd like you to consider. Um, that is, I think, I think the issue is your fear, of, our fear of death and the Epicureans and the Buddhists, uh, very different traditions have a lot of practices in which they claim and, I believe them because I believe I am close to this state, which is not the same thing as enlightenment or wisdom or anything, bullshit like that, um, in which you no longer fear death. And in fact, you start to realize the prospect of, immort of personal immortality as a horrific kind of egocentrism um, in a profound way. So let me just finish. And when... And I think, I believe that these experiences can alleviate your fear of death in, in a profound way that's not propositional because you can't capture your fear in the propositions. Ivan Illich always knew he was going to die the way that people know that two plus two equals four. But one day Ivan Illich knew he was going to die. You can't capture it in the propositions. But I think the reverse is the case. When you are free from the fear of death, a profound liberation. You also can't express that in propositions. And the only thing the propositional part of your brain can do is make a con propositional conclusion. Well, that must mean I don't die. Um, and I think that because we know that that part of the left hemisphere that likes to interpret everything propositionally uh, and off, uh, often engages in convincing confabulations. I did that. I made that move. Like 
like you know about the experiments like, okay right and where the, you know you, you show something to the split brain people you show yeah. it to the right hemisphere and it's and the right hemisphere it's a joke and so the person laughs and well why are you laughing the left hemisphere didn't see it the left hemisphere immediately confabulates with absolute certainty oh i was just thinking of somebody that uh you know uh, and it's, it's it's like that confabulation machine um i think um often rushes in a lot to give us with inappropriate levels of certainty a propositional conclusion for something that it that does not properly belong as a propositional conclusion and because i think you can and i think the task is not to pursue immortality we have known this since gilgamesh we have known this since achilles right um but to actually find liberation from it yeah no i agree wholeheartedly i i think i feel very similarly about it i i guess i'm also very comfortable with me dying let's say uh my my being my identity my ego i i do think that perhaps as in the vedic tradition that that nirvanic option is maybe more than a loss of self also a, a uniting with the one and i can't right. say much more about that but <laughs> that's kind of how i view it Spinoza has that too right he has that there's a there's a eternity is written onto the human heart um, yeah. and, I, and I think eternity is something that you can become one with, but I think the mistake is to understand eternity that is, and here I'll, you know, I'll um, defer to Wolfgang, eternity is a vertical matter, yeah, uh, and immortality is a horizontal matter, and I think you do achieve identity with that, um, and as soon as you try to bring into that ego's way of thinking, it turns into a horizontal. Of course, horizontal. of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so it's it's yeah. atemporal, let's say, and, yeah, and not that's spatial. Right. That's right. That's how I experienced it as well. I felt, I think that's right. what, where also partially the conviction came from because I felt like I was outside of time and space and it wasn't really me anymore and I was fine with that. Um, that's great. But, but yeah, uh, sorry. So I hope, and I really do hope that, I hope I've not, in, I, I hope I've actually reinforced that for you and not undermined it in any way. Oh, just, absolutely not. Good. Good. I don't Absolutely. want to do that. I mean, because I, I, I seriously believe there are completely legitimate ways in which philosophically and based on good science, we can, and perhaps using psychedelics, alleviate people of the fear of death without making any pretentious claims about knowledge of immortality or the promise of immortality.